Halfway down the west coast of Tasmania is the second largest natural harbour in Australia, after Port Phillip in Victoria. This is Macquarie Harbour, six times the size of Sydney Harbour and boasting beautiful unspoiled scenery and superb cruising. It is also a major port in a storm, halfway down a coast that is known for its difficult hard scrabble anchorages. The entrance to this refuge is the happily named Hell's Gates, and in this video we will look at how we enter Macquarie Harbour through them. The Ocean Racing Club of Victoria runs the Melbourne to Hobart or West Coaster Race from Portsea through Port Phillip Heads, across Bass Strait, the real one, down the west coast of Tasmania, across the south coast and up to Hobart where we meet the boats coming from the other place. It's a brilliant race, a real bucket list entry with plenty to challenge boats that take it on. One of the segments is down the Tasmanian west coast, a beautiful and pristine part of the world. However, it can be a problem during heavy weather, and when it comes to taking shelter on the west coast, it pays to do your homework. Parts of this video were taken during a commercial tourist cruise from Strawn around Macquarie Harbour, visiting the Gordon River, Sarah Island and Hell's Gates. We had little control over where we went and what time, so had to be a bit opportunistic about what we were able to shoot and in what order. That said, it was a great day out, highly recommended if you were down that way. This is a view of the Cape Sorel Lighthouse from a beach about five nautical miles away to the northeast. It shows how prominent the lighthouse is during the day. You should be able to see it quite readily from out to sea if the conditions are clear. This lighthouse, which at night flashes white in groups of two over 15 seconds, is your initial guide to the vicinity of the gates. Hell's Gates lies just to the east of Cape Sorel, which is marked by the Cape Sorel Lighthouse. When approaching from the north, you should leave the light to starboard. When approaching from the south, loop round the light, keeping it to starboard as well. There is a pilot boarding station at south 42 degrees 11.905 minutes and east 145 degrees 12.423 minutes. Your approach should bring you to this point to start your entry through the gates. The final question you need to ask yourself is, should I approach at all? Entry into Hell's Gates is not recommended in northwest fresh winds or in a northwest to west swell. These conditions produce heavy breaking on and around the Kawateri Shoal and sizeable swells in the gates themselves. The Kawateri Shoal is named for the steamship of the same name which ran aground while trying to enter in heavy seas. Finally, it is not recommended that you enter at night unless you have significant local knowledge. Local cruising guides advise you to enter only during slack water at the turn of the tide. Coincidentally, our tour took place in a fresh northwest wind with knots estimated at somewhere around the mid-twenties. In addition, the tide was running out against the wind. As you can readily see here, a fair bit of swell is evident in the gates. Remember this was taken from a fairly sizeable tour boat. It would look a little more daunting from the deck of a yacht. I would expect things to be a little calmer if the tide had been going in with the wind. While the gates themselves were a little bouncy, the swell was quite manageable outside. As shown here, there was a bit of breaking around the Kawatiri Shoal and a little further out where it first shallows around the shoal. We'll have another look at this as we look at the recommended entry. Having another look at the chart, our approach should bring us to the pilot boarding point. As we look towards the gates, we will see Pilot Bay to starboard, with West Breakwater to the left of that. The breakwater has a bend or knuckle about two-thirds of the way out. The purpose of the breakwater was to sustain a reasonable depth in the gates. An East Breakwater was originally planned, but never eventuated, and the West Breakwater is now commonly referred to as just the breakwater. Here we can see the breakwater, the knuckle, and Pilot Bay, although from a viewpoint further in from the pilot boarding point. The knuckle, the bend in the breakwater at the right of the screen, is quite distinct from this vantage point, but may not be quite so as we come in, so remember to watch for it as it is a key indicator on our inward journey. If you arrive at a bad time, 
for example during an ebb tide or night time, Pilot Bay may be a good place to wait, unless there is a gale force northwesterly or a heavy northwesterly to west swell. To begin your entry, start at the pilot boarding point and line up roughly parallel to the breakwater. You are trying to keep between the breakwater and any breaking seas at the top of the Kawatiri Shoal. Keep on this course until about level with the knuckle. We didn't go out that far on the tour, so I don't have any video to show you of that part of the entry. Once past the knuckle, head off to a point midway between the entrance island and Macquarie Heads. There is a lighthouse on each of these places, which are quite easy to see during the day. Now let's rejoin our tour boat as it starts its entry through Hell's Gates themselves. As we approach the gates, the light on Entrance Island, on the left, is quite easy to see. At night this is a sectored light flashing white or red in groups of three over ten seconds. If you find yourself in the red sector, you're probably approaching over the Kawatiri Shoal, which is not a good thing. Note these sectors are visible in good conditions at up to eight nautical miles for the red or ten nautical miles for the white. You should note that there are at least four wrecks marked on the chart around the gates, so it's worth taking your time and getting it right. On the headland opposite Entrance Island, you should be able to make out the Macquarie Heads light. This will get clearer as we get nearer. The Macquarie Heads light is a flashing green light with a period of 3.5 seconds, visible from 4 nautical miles in good conditions. The lighthouse in the distance in the middle of the gates is the Bonnet Island light. We'll hear more about this light in a moment. For now, it is used to line up our run from the pilot boarding point down to the knuckle on the breakwater. Once through the gates, however, going directly to this light will take you across shallows of less than a metre, which is not recommended. Instead, there are a series of leads to take you down to Bonnet Island. For now, note that Bonnet Island light is a sectored light flashing red, green or white once every three seconds and with a range of two nautical miles. For those participating in the ORCV Melbourne to Hobart West Coaster, you will probably be taking shelter from bad weather and your immediate destination is likely to be the jetty just inside the gates. This jetty is a significant structure, easily located with good depth of water alongside. The dwellings on this side of the entrance are all rental holiday houses and there seems to be no ownership or traffic issues when tying up. If you're planning to stay longer in Macquarie Harbour, you need to make your way past Bonnet Island to the Kelly Channel. This is a simple matter of picking up and following a number of leads on the surrounding hills. We pick up the first lead transit as we exit the gates themselves. Instead of coming into the jetty, we look for two lead transit marks on the hill in front of us. This chart shows them as lit with fixed lights of an unknown colour. We continue on this transit until we hit a second transit marked by two lead transit marks now on the hill behind us. Again, these are lit with fixed lights of unknown colour according to the chart. Here we can quite clearly see the first set of leads up on the hill in front of the tour boat. The boat is following them to avoid the shallows off to the port side. I wasn't able to see the second set of leads as they were not visible from my vantage point on the boat, but we can clearly see the boat turning to pick them up. Together, the two sets of leads deliver us safely down the channel to the vicinity of Bonnet Island. As we pass Bonnet Island, there is a break in the transits. This isn't a major problem, as the water depth outside Bonnet Island and the small island, the cap to the south, is quite respectable. You need to be aware there is a shallow spot further out that you should keep clear of. The red dotted line shows a safe passage line available to yachts, keeping quite close in past Bonnet Island, the cap and the breakwater in Bonnet Bay, before meeting up with the third transit off Wellington Head. The leads for the third transit are located on the land inside Bonnet Island. On picking up the transit, follow it down to the Kelly Channel number 2 mark, at which point you will pick up the fourth lead down the channel. This is not a transit as there is only one mark. 
steer 116.4 degrees true along the lead until past the Kelly Channel number 4 and then just follow the channel around until you exit into Macquarie Harbour at channel mark number 10. For overseas visitors, remember Australia is an Isla A area with red to port, green to starboard in the direction of voyage. As you can see from the preceding chart, there is a large structure called the training wall to starboard as you proceed down the channel. You are not likely to have a problem with this, but you should be aware that it is there and it can often be semi-submerged, as you can see here to the right of the view. There is a white light, Kelly channel number one, and two unnumbered, unlit green piles along its length. You can just see one of them as we go past. Once you're through the Kelly Channel and in Macquarie Harbour, remember it is a big place. You can go north to Strawn, a pleasant place to relax, replenish and refuel, with a convenient wharf to tie up to. Turning south will take you down to the Gordon River and Sarah Island. In 2018, the Strawn Wharf was reopened after the completion of a $6.5 million redevelopment. This wharf is used by commercial vessels such as our tour boat and local fishing boats, so make sure you moor in an appropriate place. It may be best to seek local advice once you reach the facility. Alternatively, inquiries can be made through Tasports. Check their website. If going south to the Gordon River and Sarah Island, note the numerous fish farms on the way down. You should keep well clear of these. There is also a large array of ODAS or Oceanographic Data Acquisition System installations that you should be aware of. The Gordon River is an area of outstanding natural beauty. It is navigable by yachts for a considerable distance upstream from its outflow into Macquarie Harbour. In the 1980s, the Franklin River, a tributary of the Gordon, was the centre of a major conservation effort to block plans to dam it for use in creating hydroelectric power. Finally, near the bottom of Macquarie Harbour is the infamous penal colony of Sarah Island. There are regular tours there making it an interesting stop. It is appropriate that we wind up our tour of Hell's Gates at Sarah Island as it was the convicts destined for Sarah Island that named the Macquarie Heads Hell's Gates as they truly were the gates of hell for them.